expression expert Tony George is age something that is just a state of mind and also the cell phone update that you're not going to want to miss. So stay tuned. expression expert, Tony George, here today. So I'm so excited to bring him on. But of course, as always, we're starting with incredibly neat news. Yeah. I actually think this is going to be the last time you're going to see this wonderful sign because we're going to move on to having a beautiful logo in the background. So I won't even have to worry about giving you this anymore, <laughs> which will be great. Uh, I, you know what? How about that? How about that? Yeah, take that, take that sign. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off the rails here and talk about something I didn't even decide until just now. Um, well, first of all, I want to talk about this table because I have a table now. This is amazing. I didn't have a table before. I had like a whole like TV stand before and now we actually decided in the budget. Yeah, just show this. Show this uh, what we have on camera. This is beautiful that we have. And you can see my shoes as well. They're not really, um, but it's shiny. So it makes it look real new and stuff. I mean, I'm so, so happy that we had, I was using these like, you know, TV trays. So every time I would like flip the page, I'd have to do one of these, you know? So I'm so glad that I now have something that's more my height. This is, this is incredible. Um, I, so the first thing, my, my off the rails comment here is about Jamba Juice. I used to work at Jamba Juice. That was my job. When I moved to New York, I became a manager at Jamba Juice. And the whole shtick with Jamba Juice is, oh, we're healthy. You know, that's, oh, we're so healthy. And then you get to make these things. And generally speaking, it sounds healthy. It's fruit juice and fruit and a couple scoops of ice cream. And you blend it up and, you know, add a protein boost or an energy boost. And, Oh, I love it. It's so good. But now, and I actually, I, I do own stock, so please go buy Jamba Juice. It's delicious. It's so good for you. Um, but you know, you can do light. I, I do light on the ice cream. That's the code for one scoop. You know, it's usually two scoops. Or you can do all fruit, or you can do Jamba Lights, which are um, like sugar substitute ones, like using aspartame or something like that. Yeah, but there's all fruit. Also, the juice is concentrated, so... Uh, but it's no extra added sugar. It really is 100% juice. It's just like the same reason they say, be careful with, uh, I'm sidetracking. The whole point is that I was walking on the subway station that connects the ACE line to Times Square, and they have those signs on the side. And there's Jamba Juice. Uh, we can look at it when we're going home on the, the 7 train, because the E train's closed, by the way, after the show's over. Surprise. Manhattan bound. Manhattan bound. E trains. But the 7 train is still open. This is so a side conversation that we need to be having on the commercial break. We'll talk about that in the commercial break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone that's not in New York, but the trains are just like our life. So, uh, Jamba Juice has energy drinks now, and I haven't looked at the ingredients, but I'm certain it's going to be something like really sugary because that's what. Red, does anybody know what's in Red Bull? I'm curious. Like, is it? It's sugar. It's sugar, right? It's caffeine. Is it, is it sugar substitute or is it like real sugar? It's both because it's all about getting energy. And so Jamba Juice is coming out with it. I encourage everyone to try it at least once. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really, I, I think it's deceptive. I don't think there's, I mean, what kind of energy drink is not going to have a lot of caffeine or sugar? That's what I'm wanting to know. So I'm, I'm really curious about that. Um, today is, uh, April 20th was the BP oil spill. And uh, they, they had mentioned that it was a year ago. And I did not even realize that. One of the things that I decided to make part of my journey to share with people is that there's, there always is this notion of right after a tragedy, lots of money goes in, lots of care, lots of worry, lots of thoughts and prayers go in, but then after a month, after two months, it's gone. Oh, I forgot about that thing. And I just bring this up to please keep your prayers out there. I did some research on Exxon Valdez, which happened now 20 years ago, 1989, so 22 years ago. 
and they're, they're still showing some, there's, there's some controversy in some studies by the companies, by Exxon, saying, oh, everything's fine, and other studies, nonprofits are saying there's still some side effects from the oil spill, that maybe there's oil in the bottom and some of the plants are changed and they've, they've digested it. The sea otter population has not come back up to what it was. So there are side effects. Uh, so just keep this in your mind and your prayers as you're in your day-to-day -day life. It's been a year, but it's still around. It's still something that has yet to be done. Yes, they didn't fish for a while in New Orleans, and so the fisheries are out, they're saying. That was the, the positive news. But it's, a year is just too short of a period to draw conclusions from. So think healthy and be careful where you get your fish. <laughs> Yes, uh, Jamba Juice doesn't sell it. <laughs> um, Larry King is doing a one-man comedy show. Hey, thank you. I'm glad that's that's exactly. I was, you know, my fear always is when I bring this stuff up that people are gonna go. Absolutely, I can't wait to get tickets. You know, but uh, y'all are like, you know, terrified. Just like if this is like Charlie Sheen Part Two or something. I don't. What is he thinking? I don't. I, I don't see this being a a hilarious and insightful look. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Diane's like, that's not funny. Yeah, I don't think it will be. I don't think it will be. So what, what um, group, let me ask you to say it this way, what group had 113 singles over the past year make Billboard's Hot 100 list? Could you repeat that? What group? made the Billboard Hot 100 113 times in the past year. This was shocking Glee. to me. Yes! Oh the show Glee, that passed Elvis. Wow. Elvis had 108. He held the record. Whoa. Granted, wow. Elvis had 25 number one hits. Glee only had two. But 130, they're just pumping those things out. I want some of that money. <laughs> Can anyone let, give me some of that? That would be amazing. I, that was shocking to me. Um, but, you know, Elvis is just one person, and that's a whole team of people, and mm, they're working on it. Um, on one of my previous episodes, we, did I miss something? What? You're right hand. You're right hand. Pringles. I don't have stock in them, so I don't care, all right? But <laughs> that is amazing. What's that? Yeah, exactly. So Pringles. I'm not even going to talk about Pringles, but you know, <laughs> Pringles. <laughs> On a, I was like, what happened? On a previous uh, episode of Absolutely, we talked about uh, cell phone usage, that to be careful, because we don't know. We all could be guinea pigs mm -hmm. in a whole cell phone experimentation and not really know it. And there was some evidence leading. I'm not saying one way or the other. The whole idea is to make your own decisions. There's ideas leading that there may be a lot of radiation. Um, towards cell phones. And I have an update. There was a, a study done by Nor Dr. Nora Volkow, Volko, director of the National, I that wasn't the joke, <laughs> though my pronunciation. Mm -mm. The director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse had 47 volunteers undergo positron emission to tomography scans. Of course, everyone knows what that is. It measures your glucose consumption, and there actually was an effect on the glucose consumption next to your brain. What does it mean? They don't know. There's no conclusive studies. They don't know whether that's just an effect and it's not going to have harm or whether it is going to have harm. But the point is that cell phones are doing something. It may, you know, there's, there are a lot of things in life that can affect you but not cause harm. We don't know. You know. We can't say one way or the other. But the suggestions, again, from last time were to move your cell phone across the room, for example, when you're sleeping. So that way it's not next to your head all the time. Whenever you're carrying it with you, take it out of your pocket. Whenever you're able to drive your car, <laughs> right, like we do that, and put it on the other side of the car, not, not, not actually with you. So just something to think about. It doesn't have to happen that way. But um, I have a picture here. I have a hottie that I want you to see. It's me. <laughs> Come on, really? Really? Yeah. Um, th this came off of uh, Time magazine. This is Dr. Jeremy Life, who is 67 years old. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry, he's actually 72 today. This is him at 67. And his 72-year-old picture uh, in the magazine, I didn't bring it with me because it was so small, but it looks, he looks just as good as he does now. 
the whole premise of this was to, there is a whole study, and I, I actually want to read this and show this in a future episode. I didn't read it for this one. Um, but it, it, there is a whole study on, uh, I don't even want to say the name. I'm not, I'm not going to get it right. But um, this came in an article about aging. And what really caught my attention was Jeanne Calment, who was, uh, she's passed away now, the oldest living person in the world that that is official based on time that they had they for sure had the correct yeah. birth date she lived to 121 years old and the whole what 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 I, I mean it hit me i just for some reason i had thought it was in the teens either in the low teens probably because that's the current one i think 116 is the current one um but this is an example of someone that lived to 121. Not only that, she lived independently until 110. 110. So I say that to just rethink your own world on aging so that you can decide to live long because thoughts create your reality. So please make that happen for yourself. Um, the, the people that, this is, this is sort of interesting, they have other controversial people that they don't necessarily believe to be the case that this is true, but Shirali Muslimov, allegedly in Azerbaijan, lived <laughs> to, the, to the claimed age of 163 years old. That's, that's the claim. And then another, an, uh, another person in Georgia, the country Georgia next to Russia, 130 years old, um, Indonesia, um, Turina, I'm not sure if it was male or female, who currently would be 157 years old. I mean, but they are not recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records because of the, the, uh, the birth date being controversial. But that, the whole idea for me was to think about your thoughts. Think about your thoughts. If you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old, then you're creating that for yourself. I really believe that. Even if you're acting that way, then maybe you're going to start leaning toward that. Um, I'm, like, I'm a, someone that likes to have science, so I want to, I want to start getting some studies about thoughts and creating reality. But in the meantime, Thank you so much for the neat news. Uh, it, uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go to a break in just a moment here. Uh, yes, uh, I want you to please tweet us. Please get on Twitter at Absolutely TV and also email us with any ideas that you have. Absolutely TV at gmail.com. Anything you want to see, any guests you would like to have on the show, please, 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 please let me know. We'll be right back after these messages with creative discussion for Tony Joy. I want to say something here. I am going to have a special truth of the day today. It's going to be, y'all are so kind. Thank you. <laughs> I usually love the applause, but today I had to like stop it for the first time. I love this. Um, I, I'm going to have a special truth of the day. It's going to be a video truth of the day. So stay tuned for that at the end. I want to tell you a little bit about creation. The word create is defined by Merriam Webster as to bring into existence. What is it? that you want to bring into existence. My first guest is gonna help you out with that today. His name is Tony George. He's the founder of Singing as a Spiritual Practice and as well as a creative expression expert. Please help me welcome Tony George. <laughs> Please, please. Sorry, I'm, a, I'm afraid to sit on my tail. Oh, no, yeah, you, you sit on that tail, girl. That's what we do here at E-Garage. Oh, crrr. Watch it every week on Wednesday nights, E-Garage. Um, so you are such a talented musician. You sing, well, you. you play piano, you play the violin. I know this, I've seen it all. Have you always been this musically inclined? Ish. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for real. Uh, yeah. You were born, you came out, ah, like, you didn't cry, you sang. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't have, like, you know, 
something weird in my hand. I had a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. I see you coming out. I, I see those high pitched. See, you were you were on tune Whistle as, as you came out. I carry. <laughs> Did you take classes when you were young, or did your parents teach you? Or no, they very... you know, I was kind of born into a poor family, South Carolina, and uh, I just kind of was raised in it. My aunt, you know, just people playing the piano and singing and pulled me up beside, I remember being four years old and being pulled up to the piano at four years old and just being plopped and being like, just play. Uh, yeah. Before you knew, like, play, like, or you were like, I mean, I was like, oh, um, I can now play. <laughs> no, I would like, you know, finger peck and listen. And, because, it, I mean, it's, I know what you're thinking. You're like, mm, interesting. But I grew, up in, I grew up in a loud church. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you could not hear me, like, doing that. People are too busy having church, honey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you were part of the music in your church as well? Yeah, or? That's, I mean, I really got my upbringing in church music. Mm -hmm. And then you went to school for this? Yeah, undergrad and master's in music. So. That is incredible. What's, what's the master's in? I didn't, I didn't even know this. Conducting and composition. Oh, mm -hmm. I, you, did you get the feel whenever you conduct? I, I, I've, I worked with him in a gospel <laughs> choir, so I get to watch him conduct as well. Did you get the, the emotions in it as well? Was that part of the class? No. Or were they just like the I one, think, two, I think three. I was black in another life. <laughs> <laughs> in another life? I don't know about all that. <laughs> I, exactly, this one. Well, you know. So I know you've toured, or at least I've read, we haven't uh -huh. talked about this. You toured with lots of famous musicians. Tell I me have. about that experience. I have. I have. I've been fortunate to travel and play with Josh Groban, Olivia Newton-John, Joe Di Messina, and you know some names in the Christian world which no one knows. Like I might know them. Okay, like Larnell Harris. Yes. You know. Yes. Harris. Does he do a duet with uh, Sandy Patty? Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. I've just seen Jesus. Yes! yes! Oh, yes! Yes. Oh, that song, that song changed my life. It is so, it is the key I, I actually change. I think it was Cindy Patty's hair that changed your life. <laughs> um, but you couldn't say that while you were on tour. Mm. No, I would just be like, you need some more Aquanet, girl. <laughs> no, was what, was, what was it like being on these tours? I mean, Backing well, you know, we always like to romanticize these things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's hard work. You tour, you sing, you, you eat whatever's put in front of you, and you, ha you have fun. It's, it's a blast. You learn a lot. But it's, it's romanticized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like you're in the four seasons every night. <laughs> what? And you're not eating? You're in a room with different seasons, but it's not the four seasons. <laughs> 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 like, the bed is moist, the shower is, you know. <laughs> Many seasons going. <laughs> what brought you out of that world and into New York City? Well, you know, I was living in Atlanta, professional violinist, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I don't know, just I, I, I started to experience what a lot of artists experience, which is things just stop happening and doors start closing. And, uh, and my life was falling apart, so to speak, in Atlanta. And uh, just one thing led to another. And it was really organic, actually, how it happened. It's not like a burning bush was like, thou shalt move in Manhattan. Yeah. It was very organic. That's what happened to me. He's right. referring to my story. <laughs> right. yeah. That was a segue. <laughs> uh, no, it was very organic how, uh, how life, people, everything kind of shaped itself to get me into uh, New York City. And but then, mm -hmm. in hindsight, it was the best thing that ever happened. Because it was, it was an aha moment for me. Like Oprah Winfrey talks about aha moments mm -hmm. and how everyone within their career has these aha moments that kind of break you out of your pattern to enter you into a new pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, and in the creative world we call that repatterning your frequency. And so that was that was a big repatterning moment for me. Because in New York, what happened? What was the New York what did New York bring for you? Well, I'm telling you what, New York is not for everybody. Mm. Mm. It's either sink or swim, honey. Are you saying that for yourself as well? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying all that to say that, you know, I, I was blessed to have been born into and nurtured as a strong personality. So I just came to New York gung-ho, ready to make it happen. And it wasn't all fun and games and success. You know, it was, how am I going to pay rent and get kicked out of this apartment, move to this apartment, and shack up with someone in a studio apartment. And then, you know, it, it's been a journey, mm -hmm. you know. But it's been a journey that has uh, 
brought me where I am and given me the tools to be who I am today. You know, the like Tony that Frank I love. Sinatra says, "If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere." That is, I love that. I love that. I came with a jaded experience to New York, so I was. I looked at New York as the evil, but now I look at it as the light. I love that. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. You can. It's true. Because so, the, you, as a creative person, <clears throat> you've had a lot of creative musical experience, mm -hmm. and that brought you where? I mean, did that? Did that? Did, how, I mean, I, I call you a creative expression expert. Yes. Why is that? Why, why would that be something that well, you could talk about? Well, so the reason I'm a creative expression expert is not only because of my degrees and experience and everything I bring to the table, but I have been nurtured, discovered, tapped into this ability that I have to where I can see who people really are. And through these tools of healing and music, I can bring that out of people. I can help them to become more authentic and more connected in who they are, because you know creativity has just been bastardized so much through competition that we don't really know who we are and what we like. And if we think we know who we are, it's really just a regurgitation of somebody else. It's not really creative, you know. What makes something creative? What makes something creative is that it's a true, authentic connection with your truth, with your uh, ability to express, and you do it in the way that only you can do it. And everyone has that ability to create. Are, I mean, so I guess what I'm leaning to with that is, are some people born more creative or find it easier to tap into their creativity than others? My, my, my theory is that you are not born with more creativity. I mean, that's, you're not born with less creativity. You're not born with more creativity. I mean, you know, I know this can be argued in psychological realms and all these things, but I'm coming at it from a different perspective. I'm coming at it from a perspective that when you come into the earth, you come as a whole being. Hmm. And then through shapes and experience and environments, through your mind takes shape, your emotions take shape, these things, and most of these things show up as limitation. What are some of the common limitations that, that I'm tone stop deaf. people? I'm born without talent. Uh, I didn't have the money, so I didn't have the training, so I'm not talented. I, you know, uh, I, I'm shy. Uh -huh. you, know? you know, these are these are all just statements that people take on as an identity, so it becomes true with who they are, and then that, of course, that's what they experience. It, I, you, when we were talking before this, I was bringing up tone deaf, and I was raised in a place where you're tone deaf or you're not tone deaf, and your response was, "No one is tone deaf." I've only heard that one other time, and I wanted to hear what, what your response to that well, is, because you know, it just, seems to me. I have, a friend that, I have a friend that every time something hard comes up, he goes, let's just break it down to the ridiculous. So let's just break it down to the ridiculous. Because actually, talking is a form of singing. Because okay. talking is built on pitches. It's built on a melodic line, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that, even if you just look at that in its elementary form, everyone has the ear to hear and to sing and to duplicate. Now, is it something that's been nurtured in everyone? No, it hasn't been nurtured in everyone. But can it be? Yes. You don't put two children together and say, let's put them in this environment and teach them Chinese. And, and we'll say, well, this one's talented, so it's going to learn Chinese. And this one's not talented, so it's not going to learn Chinese. I mean, it's just as ludicrous to say, this child can't learn music because it's tone deaf, but this child can. Wow, that, that could be a bold statement to some because the idea of how complicated music could be and oh my gosh, there's just so much and I, I'm tone deaf. And I, for me, I only come from what I know. Mm -hmm. And for me, I came from a musical place. Mm -hmm. I came from a musical family. So I, I got that. I, I picked up on it. Right. Whereas one of my friends, for example, from high school, she could not hit a pitch. And as we would have called it back in high school in my young age, oh, she's tone deaf. Of course. But... She can learn. That's the, the message here. Of course. She can learn with the right with lessons the, and practice. Well, it's not just lessons and practice, because that's not sufficient. It all goes back to the very thing that crippled the person to begin with, and that's their thought. That's what they hold to be true about themselves. If I grow up in a family that lives off food stamps, and that's all I know, then it's going to be hard for me to believe that I can be a millionaire. Hmm. So I'm going to be circling around, chasing my ass in a circle, and be like, well, I can't pay my bills. Mm. Right, because that's my truth. That's powerful. That's a, that's a, I love that. I, I, wanted, I wanted to bring this out loud and give these examples. Whenever we're talking about creativity, 
it may not be limited to just, for example, music no. or art. No. Let's talk about what else. Where could this creativity... As I, said, as I said before, creative expression is anything that comes from an authentic connection of who you are and is expressed in only the way you can do it. That can be done in many art forms. Mathematics, drawing, some, if someone really connects to being an attorney. I mean, there's many ways that you can bring your creative expression into the world. It's not just music. It's not just singing. What about those people who are, they would, like my accountant friend, mm -hmm. people that are very left-brained, <laughs> very, they're by the number, and they're someone that would say, ah, oh, that's just not me. I'm, very, I'm a left-brained person. I, I could do it, but it's just, it's, it's not easy for me. I'm good at numbers. How, yeah. how can, what would you advise to someone that would well, be I that kind of I would say, And so it is. You've made your mind up. <laughs> You've already made your mind up. I can't do anything with that. You can only do something if you're a, if you're a vessel. You're like Plato. I can't shape a rock without a chisel and some sandpaper, honey. <laughs> and that is not fun. <laughs> you know, you've got to be first of all willing to think and to think bigger than yourself. Benjamin Franklin said, "The quality of your life is reflective of the quality of questions you're asking." Yes. Right. Yes. So, if you're not willing to ask a bigger question of your creativity, then that's cool. Just be conscious of it and move on but you're not going to be authentic in what you're expressing. I like that. I, I love that word authentic keeps coming up a lot because, well, l I, w why don't you say that? But the, why, why does authentic come up a lot? I don't want to assume here. Well, it doesn't actually come up very much because authenticity equals vulnerability. Authenticity equals vulnerability. Yeah. If you are authentic, then you are open. Well, there's a part of you that's out in the open. Mm -hmm. Your emotions, your heart. You're open for love. You're open for your heart to get broken again. You're open for mm -hmm. putting yourself out there, and it's going to result in criticism. But you know, this is not this is not uh, a means to put up a wall. Mm -hmm. But that's where competition comes in. If I can't be myself, then we work a little hard to learn someone else's technique so that I can at least sound good. Or mm -hmm. you know. Whenever we were discussing creative expression mm -hmm. before this, we, we, you had typed in creative expression with a capital C. Right. Why was that? Why, why capital C? Well, because we're not one-dimensional beings, right? We're mental, we're emotional, we're physical, uh, we're intellectual. There's many parts of us. We're not just one. So for me, the capital C encompasses everything that encompasses you as a person, whether you, whether you have spirituality or you don't or whatever. But we can all agree that we're multi-dimensional beings. We're thoughts, we're energy, we're vibration. I mean, you, you, you can just be a quantum physicist or a scientist and figure that out. So for me, the capital C means our whole being, everything that is a part of you expressing. Because if it's not a full body experience, it's not expression. I love that you connect to people who are, that would call themselves, let's say, oh, I don't believe in anything beyond myself. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That's all there is. Right. And you're you're still someone. I can work with you. I could. I there's creativity for you. There's. This is not dependent on you no. being believing in this religion, that religion, or anything else no. like that. No. Because your belief in something doesn't make it real or unreal. <laughs> so if you can just get into your body, you're halfway there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Get it into your body, and you'll be halfway there. Mm, yeah. I like that. We're going to go to a break right now. So stick with us to hear more on creative expression. Mm, I'm getting it into my body right now.
and I've just I've enjoyed it. I personally had harbored a desire or an ambition to do a film festival but had not gone about doing anything for it because I knew it was a lot of work and I didn't have the time so luckily for us Dennis decided to do it. I'm very happy to be accepted here at Dennis's great festival and you know when you put a lot of work into something and you get acknowledged it makes you feel good. ask about singing as a spiritual practice because that's something that I learned. It was a class that you offered and I thought it was so fascinating, especially with uh, the notion that something as, as, as um, complex guess, is the word, something that often takes training and you got to learn notes and you have to do this and turning it into a spiritual practice. Let me actually say this. You describe it as a program that uses the medium of singing to help people break through barriers and beliefs that keep people from creatively expressing and keeps mm -hmm. them small. Mm -hmm. what, what about people that would say, oh, I'm not musical? How do you, how do you help someone in that, that circumstance? I would say, oh, cute. <laughs> <laughs> You're not musical. <laughs> you don't have legs either. No. <laughs> you know, everyone's musical. You don't believe it, put on some music and see if your foot doesn't start tapping. Mm -hmm. 
or put on some, put on a good beat that you recognize, see if your head doesn't start bobbing. There's, there is a part of every person that is innately connected to music because music bypasses the critical mind. It goes right to the body, you feel it, you want to dance, you want to move, you, there's something about music. And, uh, you know, the singing as a spiritual practice is just a, a class where I use, I use the medium of singing, but it's not really about singing. How did you get come up with this? I mean, that's such a unique perspective. I've never heard anything like this. Yeah, it, there, uh, to my knowledge, I'm like one of the, I'm like a creative expression pioneer. It's funny to say that in 2011, right? It's taken it this long to start asking bigger questions about creativity. Uh, but no, five years ago, I, I came up with this idea uh, to, I, I just started noticing everybody wanted to connect, express, sing, but because of our excuses, no one was giving themselves permission to do it. And so basically I developed my own techniques and curriculum around giving people a safe space and leading them through certain exercises to get connected and to give themselves permission to at least try something. You know, I tell people, you know what, at least try it on. You know, you don't ever know if you like something if you don't try it. What's been your biggest growth moment from teaching this class? My, big, my biggest growth moment has uh, been <clears throat> the ability to help other people get through their problems and by default, I've automatically grown into a greater level of expression for myself. Because you see, you can't help other people without growing yourself. That's mm. why people love volunteering and helping in the soup kitchen. There's a part of you that wants to serve. And by serving, you automatically get something back and you grow naturally. So. Speaking of serving, I hear you're going to be serving mm. the world at large. <laughs> you're going on a tour. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. That's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm going on a six-month national tour. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, East Coast to West Coast, uh, just doing some different theaters and spiritual centers and music halls and kind of doing the whole gamut just singing and speaking at seminars and teaching and just doing me. How are you able to, to uh, how, how do you create something like this? That, that's incredible to me, the idea of, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna tour. Well, child, you can't do it by yourself, okay? <laughs> You'll be like the little engine that could, except you, <laughs> except you won't. <laughs> but you can't do it by yourself, you know? Uh, and any time you see someone accepting a Grammy Award or building a building or building a bridge, it was a team of people that did it. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is an idea that came to me that I would love to do. And I just, I just have a great support system around me that I was like, all right, let's, let's help you. Let's support you. Let's get the word out. Let's promote you. Let's this and this and this. And so it's, it's only been able to happen because I have so many wonderful people in my life that have stepped up. What will you have done or what will you have said once you're done with this tour to say, this has been a success for me? Well, child, I will not have to say anything because you're going to hear about it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes? Oh, yeah. oh yes. Oh, yeah. How? How am I going to how am I gonna hear about it? I mean, what's the, is it going to be on, on your website? Or are you going to be it'll announcing be, it? Of or? course. It'll be on my website and all that. And I, you know. By the way, TonyGeorgeMusic.com or TonyGeorgeProductions.com. Check out both of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I, I can't really reveal anything publicly right now. But I'm going to have certain national exposure coming up and all that. So, aha, okay. So, so we have. We <laughs> <laughs> so many, it's many coming. people will hear about it. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, so that's that's the the element. There's going to be national exposure. Is, There's going to be is, national is the, exposure. Yeah. Congratulations on that as well. Yes. yes. No, seriously, that is. I'm happy for you and jealous. So if Regis and Kelly, who I work for, <laughs> want to give me a call and let me go on the show for a day, I would happily do it. Um, but this is about you, your tour, your tour. And I, hey, I will talk about your tour on there as well, because that's, that's what this is all about. I'm so, I'm so excited for you. How do you pay for something like this? Well, I have sponsorships. I have people helping me out. I also already have a big base uh, in terms of like my clients and people I work with and who I help heal and coach and, you know. And, you know, and when it comes to something this big, let's just pretend that we think everything's gonna be in place before we do it, and it's not. Sometimes you just have to step out in faith, you do all the planning you can, and then you just go for it. Mm -hmm. And watch how the universe just 
steps in and fills the blanks. You know, one, one thing I love, there's, a, there's some books and stuff out there I've been reading that says, you don't have to feel ready to be ready. Okay. Hmm. Some, sometimes you just have to step out and you just have to do it. Yes. I hear that. Right? Mm. And, and that's what keeps people small. Ooh, well, I don't have enough money. Well, I don't have, well, you're right, you don't. And you have a point? <laughs> you know. So this is your creativity being manifested Absolutely. in your own experience. Absolutely. I'm, I'm creating and manifesting my creativity by going on a six month tour national, nationwide. So I want to talk, I want to talk about this so that people can have some take home. For example, mm -hmm. one of the most common creativity blocks I hear about is writer's block. There's tons mm -hmm. of writer friends I know that mm -hmm. are catering forever because they're, oh, you know, I have a block. I have a block. Mm -hmm. I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's a way to help with someone that has these blocks? I mean, you know, there's not one simple answer, but I will say, not. but I will say that at the true essence of writer's block, it's just because in the process, you've gotten out of the flow at some point. Mm -hmm. You've gotten off track. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're experiencing creative block, writer's block, just take a walk, take a breath, do something differently, like clean your palate, mm -hmm. and come right back to it. Because right? there's always a part of you that knows what to write next, or you just sometimes have to take a break and take a breather and do something different. Do you have any success stories that, that you know of that like this is, this has been one of the greatest journeys I've experienced that I, or I've witnessed to say from someone who didn't know where their creativity was and look at them now. Look of course. What a, of course. Look what a journey. <clears throat> I mean, I've worked, I've worked a lot of one-on-one -on -one people and worked with a lot of people, and I've had people come to me and say, well, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do or I just don't know what my creative expression is. You know, and the next thing you know, they're out writing books. They're opening healing centers for people. They're, they're starting workshops and courses of their own that are now being taught in churches and centers, you know. It's not, it's not that people don't know what they want to do. I mean, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you tell them, oh, that's cute. I'm like, oh, <laughs> of course you don't know. <laughs> Everybody always knows what they want to do. That's not the question they should be asking. The question they should be asking is, do I believe that I can do it? Do I believe that I can do it? And yeah. once they have an answer to that, once they... Once they have an answer to that, then they know how to move forward. Because mm. if you don't believe you can do it, then you're never going to find the answer to that question. Mm. I love that. I love that. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after these messages. So stay with us. Audience questions time, so let's see who has questions. Anybody? Questions? Yes. Say your name and Hi, then. My name and, is Carly. Uh huh. And I'm what's your from question? Queens, New York. Okay. So my <laughs> question to you, Tony, is do you have any specific plans after the six months is over? Like, are you planning on coming back to New York or are you leaving it up to the universe to let you know? <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> <laughs> Just in case you have comments. Uh, you know, it, it's, my, it's my plans to uh, hang out in L.A. for a while. I have some other artistic, creative things that are going to be coming up for me, so I'm just going to test the waters and stay in L.A. for a little bit. So. Mm. Okay. Mm. Guest house. Okay. <laughs> Who else? Question? Yes. Uh, my Here. name is Billy, and I'm a queen in New York. <laughs> 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 you own it, girl. You own well, first it. First of all, I was going to say, I have, I've taken singing as a spiritual practice individually from Tony and got so much out of it. I'm one of those um, people that he talked about who um, came to, I uh, had a breakthrough. I had a breakthrough. Um, personal breakthrough and creative breakthrough. Um, but my question is, not about me, my question is, um, like, I, I know for me what the what the voices in my head were from. I, I, heard, I could picture like who it was who said, you can't do this or you're too old for this. Or I know where that came from, but you've worked with a lot of people. So mm -hmm. what do you find is the common, is it people's parents mm -hmm. um, or is it themselves are their own worst uh, critic? Well, I, I, would say, I would say two things. A, it's our own selves. And B, it's usually uh, the people that have the greatest influence on your life, and that's your teachers. You know, a lot of people have a lot of blocks from music teachers or other people who said, 
well, you're just not good enough, or you don't practice enough, or you're not, you know, you know. It, it's, but there are a lot of voices that are self, self-criticism that just doesn't give yourself permission to do it. Well, for me, I, I had an acting teacher who actually failed me, gave me a, an E. And why is that funny? Um, sure. <laughs> Anyhow, I had an acting teacher who failed me, and I thought, I thought that what that gave me was I'm going to show him. Because I would picture myself on The Tonight Show with, well, Carson <laughs> back then and then Joan Rivers when she would sub. Um, like saying, yes, I had an acting teacher, you know, who failed me. Like I, I had that mentality, but it didn't really get me very far. Right. Well, that was not a question, was it? <laughs> but, but I was just saying that. I'm like, I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess I was, my question would be, so is, is, can um, that negative reinforcement sometimes build you up to make you a stronger person, do you think? Look, let, let's just get down to brass tacks, right? If your desire to create is not stronger than your pain, you're never going to create. And so many people have spent more time growing their pain that the pain is actually stronger than their passion. So we don't follow what we would love. So a part of this process is learning to stop listening to those voices and start growing what it is you would love to do. Mm-hmm. Period. Well, thank you for everything that you've done for me to help me with You're that welcome. creativity. I love you. I love you. Another question? Yes. Hi, Tony. Um, my question is... Your name? Just so oh, I'm sorry. My name is Vivian. Um, and I'd just like to know how you would respond to the person who says, I've never had a dream. I've never had a passion. How do you... How do you what do you say to a person like that who believes that about themselves? Of course. I mean, you'd be surprised at how many people actually say that. Well, I don't have a passion. Well, I don't have a dream. Mm-hmm. Well, that's like saying I don't have a left arm. It's just that we haven't given ourselves a chance to remember. Like if I walked around all day only realizing I had a right arm and was not conscious of my left arm, I'd have a hard time getting around. Mm. But the second I allow myself to remember that I I actually had another item on my body, all of a sudden life becomes easier. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I said before, ask deeper questions. Try things you've never tried. Get in your body. Because most of the time people say, I don't know what passion is. It's all a head thing. It, you know, analyze, you paralyze. You know, most mm-hmm. people, actually, when you get into your body, most of the time it just rises to the surface. It's just like, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> and, and you get ideas on what to do. Mm-hmm. And when you get an idea, just follow it. Okay. Thank you. One more question? Yes. I'm Claire. I'm from Queens as well. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> <laughs> Queens! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Queens. Woo. 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 And my question is, you were talking about how teachers can harm people. What do you do that's different from other teachers? Because mm-hmm. I've had teachers that I hated, that I thought ruined me. Yeah. That people were like, she's the best, she changed my life. So yeah. what do you do to not harm people. What I do is I don't impose my convictions on the student. I take the tools and I let their voice be exalted. I let their voice be supported with the tools of creativity. Most people say, here's the tools of creativity, and if your voice doesn't sound like this, you don't fit into this box, Mm -hmm. then you're no good. Well, when I approach my sessions, there is no box. Mm. You get to make the box. And built on that foundation, you can rise to the top. Because think about it. At one point, there wasn't a box for blues or jazz. Someone had to make that box. Mm -hmm. And then it became a box. And some people may look at Janis Joplin and say, wow, she's amazing. And then someone else may say, well, she screams her face off. I hate hearing her. But she carved (laughs) a place out for herself Mm -hmm. in the universe because she believed in herself, and she did it. Thank you. We have time for one more. Did you want to you ask? Let me bring this around you here. Hi, so I'm, I'm MC from Manhattan. And um, I'm just curious, can you describe the tools a little bit? I worked with you a little bit, and I, I think each person, I, I mean, I don't know. My experience was, well, I can't tell you what my experience was. It was so in the moment, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> that I, you know, I can't even say what the tools are, actually except to, that it was an experience that opened up my ability to take a stand 
Yeah, this is, and I'm very glad she asked this. I would love to have mm -hmm. tools that people could mm -hmm. use to take home with them. That of course. For creativity. I mean, there, there, there are several tools I will share with you. Now, remember that statistics have to do with groups of people. Mm -hmm. And you're not a statistic. You're an individual. So it's going to be different for each person. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that you can begin to do is to uh, do something that you've never done before that will put you in your body. Take a dance class. Uh, uh, take a swimming class. Do something that, first of all, gets you in your body. And then second of all, do something out of your comfort zone. Get uncomfortable. Because if you're always staying in your comfort zone, then you're not really being creative. So those are just a couple of things people can do. Get uncomfortable. Get in your body. Try something new. Try something you've never done, even if you feel like, well, I'm not really a painter. Just try a painting class. Try something different. Definitely. Because you're going to get into your body, and then that's going to lead to something. And then that's going to lead to something. Exactly. And that's going to lead to something. Exactly. Right. Well, thank you very much, Tony. That's the question. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after these messages. So stay with us. Thank you to Tony. You are so amazing, such a good guest, and thank you for helping us find our creativity. You can find out more about Tony at TonyGeorgeMusic.com. You can find out more about his coaching at TonyGeorgeProductions.com. We have an exclusive invitation to all of you to join his free four-week teleclass on Creative Prosperity. It begins on Tuesday, May 3rd at 8 p.m. If you want to join, just email him at nyviolin at hotmail.com. All of you are invited as well. Also, everyone in our audience gets a free 15-minute session with Tony. Congratulations. It's a gift from him to you. So thank you for that. That is so kind of you. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. So thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> thank you so much for coming back for our truth of the day today. I actually have a video to share with you. Today that we're filming this is Passover. One of my truths regarding that is that the multicultural basis of America has helped me to become the person that I am. Without all the religions, races, creeds, sexual orientations, uh, and I'm talking about people that are not like me, they have changed who I am. And so I'm very grateful for that. And one of the biggest connections I've ever had is with my Jewish friends, including my first roommate, Lauren Pold. I want to give us a, dedicate this to you. I have a video that she found and passed on Facebook. She has no idea. I'm sharing this right here. So please, let's have a look.
So happy Passover to all of my friends. I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful week. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in. Please find us at Twitter at Absolutely TV. Find us at Gmail, AbsolutelyTV at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook at Lee Cambry Fan Page. I'm uh, sorry, Facebook.com slash Lee Cambry Fan Page. And be sure to download this at eGarage. You can find all this information at www.leecambry.com slash Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Oh, and thank you, Tony George, of course. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. So grateful. Oh, so grateful, grateful, grateful. <laughs>